Welcome back to the channel. In this video I'm going to do a review of the Faber Castle Pit Graphite Matte Pencils. Now this video has taken me a little bit longer to do than expected and I wanted to make sure to give them a thorough test as well as see what they're like when you use them in an actual picture. So without further ado let's get into the video. So this is the 11 set and as you can see it quite clearly states for reduced reflection on paper. So they're not completely flat, it's reduced reflection. Now I did purchase these myself and in the UK I paid at the time of recording this £16.90 or in the US they are currently available at $19.58. So let's open the tin up and we'll see what's in there. So the first thing we've got is a booklet and this just tells you a little bit about the company, the pencils themselves, as well as a few hints and tips. Eight pencils, blending stump, pencil sharpener, normal eraser, personally speaking I would have liked to have sent a kneadable eraser as well but that's me. As for the grading on these pencils, we start with an HB, then we go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and then 14B for the darkest. So we've only got even numbers, there are no odd numbers for some reason. One thing that is noticeable with these compared to the 9000 series is that these are matte black in colour as opposed to the usual Faber Castle green. As you can see, if I rotate the pencil in the light, the tip does maintain a relatively matte appearance to it. Whereas the normal graphite pencil does have a degree of shine. So let's try them out and we can see how the various tones compare against each other, as well as how dark they actually are. So that's all the tones laid out. And I've got to say, it's noticeable how much lighter the HB is compared to the others. We do have a slight difference between the 2B. Uh, and then really the next change then is 6B. And I would say from the 6B through to the 14, there's not really that much difference. If there is, it is only very, very slight. The 14, though, is very, very noticeably softer than the rest. As a direct comparison, I lay down the equivalent tones of the Caran d'Ache pencils that I use. What I'm looking for here is any difference that there may be in tone between the different makes when using an equivalent grade. It's been my experience through the years that although all manufacturers use the same grading system, they do tend to vary considerably between one make and the other. Now looking between the two makes I would say that in the Caran d'Ache the HB is very slightly darker but there's not really that much in it. With the other grades there's, there's not really hardly any difference at all. And with the Caran d'Ache they go down to a 9B so what I've done is I've put the 9B by the 14B of the Faber Castle and as you can see they're pretty much identical in the, the depth and darkness of the tone. Now remember, they've claimed to have reduced the amount of reflection, not to have eliminated it totally. And that's noticeable here as I angle the paper against the direction of the light. As with a normal graphite, you can see the darker the tone, the more it will reflect. But the 14B is definitely more reflective than the other tones. The next thing I want to see is how well the pencils will blend. And to do this I'm going to use the blending stump that came with the kit. Now this has a nice soft velvet feel to it so it should work well for this. As I thought the stump works well. Also as with regular graphite pencils they do appear to blend very smoothly. 
I would say that as you get to the darker tones, you do tend to get a slightly harder edge. Now, as with the Caran Dash pencils that I use, what I would do is I would favor using a slightly lighter tone over the top. And then as you blend through, this creates a smoother, more graduated transition. I now do the same with the Caran Dash. And as you can see, you get a very similar result. As I said previously, I want to create a smoother transition on the darker tone. I can simply work over the edge with a lighter one and then blend through. So after that, from what I can see, they blend just as well as regular pencils. Now the next question is, do they blend with other makes of pencil? So to try this, I'm gonna use a 6B of the Faber Castle and a 2B from the Caran Dash. And then we'll try to blend them together. And as you can see, no problem there. The two makes seem to blend together quite easily. So we've seen how well the tones lay down and blend. So now we just need to find out how easy they are to erase. I'm going to start with the eraser that came with the kit. Now, as you can see, the darker tone is definitely more difficult to remove than the lighter one. And it's the same on the Caran Dash. Now, I would say that the Caran Dash and the Faber Castle, the 9B and the 14B are very similar. But as you can see, the 2B on the Caran Dash is easier to remove. And this is the same with the electric eraser. Now for the kneadable eraser, I'm going to make sure that before I start each one, that it is clean. I'm also going to make sure to only press the same amount of times to give a fair test. Again, we see the same result. The 14B Faber Castle and the 9B Caran Dash are very similar. But on the 2Bs, there's definitely more tone removed from the Caran Dash. I wanted to just see if I could remove a little bit more tone with the kneadable eraser. So after cleaning it, I just tried it again and did manage to remove some more. Now the difference I would say between these and normal graphite pencils is they do take a little bit more work when trying to remove the tone from the paper. So that's the basic test done. And what I want to do now is to try them out whilst doing an actual picture and then I can get a more accurate sense of a feel to what the pencils are actually like. Now, a few months ago, I did a sketch of a baby rhino and it had quite a lot of contrast in it. So I thought that would be a great subject to do for this and it'll also give us a comparison between the two types of pencils. Normally I use an H pencil for my initial drawings, but as the lightest one in the kit is an HB, I'm going to use that. Now these lines may look a little dark, but that's how I normally build a picture up anyway. Eventually they will either disappear into the drawing or they can be erased. I'm now using the 2B pencil and what I'm doing is I'm using it to apply tone lightly to create a mid-tone in the shadow areas. And this will basically act as a base layer. Now the grain of the paper will show through. So to remove this, I just use the blending stump over the top and this smooths out the tone. For the darker tones in the picture, I've decided to use the 6B and 10B pencils. Now, one thing that did become more noticeable as I got to these darker tones was they definitely are not as smooth as what I'm used to. They tend to drag a bit and they do have a rougher texture to them. These pencils are nice and dark, but I've got to say after using them, I don't really see any reason why I would need to go past an 8B. Now, just as a matter of interest, I'm working on St. Cuthbert Saunders Waterford hot press paper for this picture, and it does take dark tones very well. 
Just as with regular graphite pencils, I found I could also use the blending stump to knock tone back in shadow areas, creating a little bit more shape. I did contact Faber Castle with a few questions about these pencils, and I've put a transcript of that conversation in the description below, as it does go into carbon content, as well as whether they'd be introducing any graphite blocks into the range. Obviously, they wouldn't go into too much detail about the composition of the materials, but it's there if you want to read it. So after cleaning up with a kneadable eraser, that's the picture finished. So it's worth remembering that these are for reduced reflection. And as you can see here, as I angle the picture more and more against the light, you do still get reflection. It's just not as much. If we now compare this with the same picture that was done with the regular graphite pencils, you can see that it does reflect that a little bit more and that it does come in at a lesser angle. So I think the first thing to look at with these is the value for money and quality. And definitely with Faber Castle being an established high quality brand, you're definitely getting that. Value for money, again, I think it's a good price for the set. You're getting a lot of stuff in there. Though, like I said, it would have been nice to have the kneadable eraser as well, as personally I find that's an essential tool. In terms of feel, it was definitely noticeable that these have a coarser texture to them and they're not as smooth as what I'm used to. Now, this was particularly noticeable when blocking in larger areas of tone, as the pencils do seem to drag across the paper. Now, with the HB, that's got a much smoother feel to it, but as you go down through the tones, this definitely becomes more apparent. If you are going to use these pencils, I wouldn't say you need to go past an 8B. I can't say I really noticed any difference between that and the 14. Equally as well as a set of these, probably to get everything you need, you only need an HB, a 4B and an 8B. And that's probably about it. I mean, you could add a 2B in because there was a slight difference in that but certainly definitely don't really need the others. If you want to go a bit further, then fine, go for the 10B, but definitely down to the 14, don't need it. So in terms of shine or reflection, these definitely reduce that, but it depends whether that bothers you or not. Personally speaking, when I've finished the picture and it's framed and it's behind glass and it's hung and lit correctly, I can't say I really notice a problem. But if it is something that bothers you, then this is the way to go. So will I be switching over to these? Well, the answer is no. As I said earlier, the shine is not really something that I find an issue. And equally as well, I really do prefer the smoothness of the Caran Dash pencils. Now I have put a link in the description below if you are interested in trying any of these out. It is an affiliate link, so I do earn a small commission from any sales from it. And that is greatly appreciated and it really does help me out. Also, if you have tried these out, then why not let me know your opinion and how you've got on with them in the comments below. It's always interesting to know other people's opinions. Also as well, again, if you are thinking on trying these, this is my opinion, so it might be worth checking out some other videos. There are plenty of reviews online about these, so see what other people think. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found the video useful and I'll see you next time.